morning. You have entered the realm of the gods. So give us your mind and your full attention. So you say you deal with esoteric information? I never heard of such. Well, you're in for a treat. Blah talk, blah talk, this is the blah talk. I lean L Bay dropping jewels every day. Blah talk, blah talk, this is the blah talk. Metaphysical, we deal with the spiritual. Blah talk, blah talk, this is the blah talk. I lean L Bay dropping jewels every day. Blah talk, blah talk, this is the blah talk. Metaphysical, we deal with the spiritual. So you claim to be a god? Damn right I'm a god. The maker, the owner, cream of the planet Earth, father of civilization, god of the Tune in or lose, friend. All strategies apply mathematically. The information he drop is real powerful. So get your notepad, it's more than an hour full. Watch your jaw, the crew is watching talk. Indigenous to the land, wherever we stand. First world order, we bring it at home in the first quarter. Invisible lines don't apply, we cross borders. Silly rabbit, knowledge for God. No matter where you resign, Lodge, Temple of Mars. So don't fret or proceed with hesitation. Just tune in to Blog Talk to get the information. Peace. Hey, how are they, Washington East? I'm Brother Fahim with an L. Filling in for Dr. Asuralim with the Park L. Bay for the night. I'll be, the, I'll be your host for the night. And I'm, uh, I hope everything is well with you and yours and your family and all the, uh, everybody else's family across the world and the globe tonight. Okay, I have an announcement to make. Um, want to remind you and everyone that uh, don't miss the event uh, we're having from the 17th, 18th, and 19th down in North Carolina with Eileen and Kadira, L. Bay. Want to have a lot of things that they probably need to learn, a lot of history, a lot of science, uh, great food. Uh, me, myself, I was down there last year. And I gave a lecture myself, you know. So come on down, you know. And uh, I guarantee you, you will not be disappointed. Okay? Come on down and make it. I'm planning on being down there again myself this year. I was so impressed. So, you know, if you, uh, and it's like I said before, in the last and previous blog talk shows, if you have any questions, just call a nine one zero three six four nine zero nine nine. That again nine one zero three six four nine zero nine nine. Or you can uh, get on the computer on the, get on the website and uh, uh, the website is www dot dr dot com. I see again www.dralimlbay.com Come on down. It's an event you do not want to miss. You know, please contact them and find out for further information that you need to know. You know, you have a problem getting there, they'll, they'll, uh, they'll tell you how to get, get down there, how to go to the right place. All right? Well, our topic tonight is... uh. Uh, the man about the Moore Science Temple, Incorporated of America, tax fraud, and nationality. Uh, you know, I know a lot of you probably seen on a lot of uh, programs on YouTube and uh, and DVD, different DVDs on people uh, people talking about, especially those who are always talking about. Uh, Moors and the Moors Science Temple, Incorporated. You know, they're always talking about uh, certain Moors. I hear on, on YouTube, on the Internet, talking about that you must pay taxes. You know, pay taxes. You know, pay your tax, taxes. You know, you must have a driver's license to drive. And you must, uh, all these things, you know. Uh, evidently, these brothers don't really know what time it is, do they? 
you know, they don't know that the driver's license is a um, uh, what you call a commercial instrument to say, you know, you know uh, taxes as well. My thing is this. Okay. They're saying paying taxes, right? They tell you the more science temple to pay taxes. Okay, my question is, what are you going to pay taxes with? Hmm? Because there is no money. There is no money. Ever since the country's bankruptcy act in 1933, March 17th of 1933, to be exact, or March 9th, put it that way, of 1933, the United States Corporation went bankrupt. So, what in the hell are you talking about? The taxes itself is a fraud. Taxes. Pay with what? He never paid taxes, so why are they, or, or they never paid taxes, so why are they trying to tell the rest of the public to pay taxes? Knowing that there is no money. You never had any money, so how are you paying taxes? Tell me that. And this is some of the nonsense that's been going on, you all. You know, uh, you see a lot of these clowns on YouTube and making DVDs and stuff like that. A lot of them, I hate to say, are co tail pro operatives. A lot of them are agents. As Brother Kujaw at Wael would say, the Kennel and Moors, he would say, dirty Moors. But that's exactly who they are. I'm not going to mention no names of uh, these brothers I'm talking about, I'm talking about paying taxes and all this other silly mess. But like I say, this is the foolishness that's been going on, you know. Uh, you, you must have your driver's license. They must know that you must have them. But they're telling you you must get a privilege to drive on your own land. What they're trying to tell you, you should get a privilege and not a right to travel. You have a right to travel and a privilege to drive. A privilege to drive and a right to travel. Those are two different things. They're not the same. There are people that are having problems with uh, and more traffic infractions than any any uh, more have more traffic infractions infractions than any other case I ever known. Why? Because they are trying to follow the law. They are following the law. You're going to jail, getting fined, getting tickets for following the law. the Supreme Court so hell that there is no law for, uh, for an individual to have a driver's license to travel on his own land. Okay, I'm going to read a little something about taxes here. I'm about taxes. He's talking about taxes and all this here, all this foolishness. Say so like if you're working on a job. Okay, like you said, some of you are working, you know, have jobs or whatnot or what have you. And it says here in this booklet, for the purpose of this booklet, we will begin with the explanation explanation of the W-4 form and the payment of income taxes that you have allow, allow them to deduct from your employment wages. Thus, you have agreed to deduction by claiming, by claiming how you ever um, 
many of you have claimed in signing the W-4 every year. You are not compelled to claims of either. The income tax is profit from a corporation investment and are not employment wages. Deduction of employment wages are voluntarily by law, not involuntarily, but voluntarily by law. The the W-4 form, income tax versus employment taxes, and your choice to claim any exemptions. But I'm here to tell you, you're not going to uh, get these kind of teachings in your more science temples of America Incorporated. Because they don't teach civil matters. As a matter of fact, they don't teach more science history, period. Most of them walking around here think that they are nationalized. They are not nationalized. Here I go. Here we go. Employers are under the assumption that everywhere who wishes or everyone who wishes to work must file a W-4 form. Employee withholding allowance certificate. That's what it, that's what a W-4 form is. And also, W-4 also meaning it means for war. That's what the four and the W means. The four, the number four means four, F-O-R, and the W means war, W-A-R. Actually, it was established during the Second World War, or World War II. But while we all know the World War II has been long been over with, so why are you still doing it? This information will prove that nobody is required to file Form W-4. The Internal Revenue Code is divided into sections and has regulations for different taxes. Income tax regulations are found in Subtitle A of the Code. Withholding tax regulations are found in Subtitle C of the Code. And The title of the chapter is Employment Taxes. Withholding requirements is located in in the, in the Internal Revenue Code and Subtitle C, the employment taxes. The withholding tax is not the same as the income tax. It is a separate entity. Dealing with a case here called Central Illinois Publishing Company versus U.S. 541. Okay. The income tax and the withholding tax are separate entities. Income tax is not due until April 19th. April 15th of the following year and is profit deprived from a a corporate investment. Withholding tax has to do with employment taxes. The Form W-4 applies to an employee subject employee subject to employment taxes, but the employee is still not required to file any Form W-4. Nobody is required to file a Form W-4. Take a look at Section 7505 of the IRS Code. It says, any individual required to supply information to his employer under Section 3402 who willfully supplies false or fraudulent information or who willfully fails to supply information there under which would require an increase in the tax to be withheld under Section 3402 shall in lieu of any other penalty provided by law, except penalty provided by Section 6682 upon conviction of thereof, be fined not more than $1,000 or imprisonment, not more than one year or both. Did y'all, did y'all hear that or get that? Okay, let me go, let me continue. Section seven two oh five starts out with any individual required to supply information to his employer under the section thirty four oh two. So let look let's look at 
section 3402. Let's look at it. On or before the date of the commencement of employment with an employer, the employee shall furnish the employer with a signed withholding exemption certificate relating to the number of withholding exemption which is claims, which shall, which shall no even exceed the number to which he is entitled. This subsection is all too often misinterpreted as his own as it is only you on commencement of employment the employee shall furnish a signed W four form without any consideration given to the rest of the sentence. Considering the entire sentence it shows the employee shall furnish a W four form relating to showing the number of exemption claimed. Simply put he shall furnish a W-4 form if he claims exemptions. There is no requirement for the employee to claim any exemption, not even a requirement to claim zero. The IRS code gives the employer authority to withhold employment taxes from employers. It says here, for this purpose, for purposes of this chapter, the term number of withholding exemptions claimed means the number of withholding exemptions claimed in a withholding exemption certificate in effect under Section 3402. Now, it says here, is your, is your employer an agent for the IRS? If so, they must show you proof of such which does not which does not exist with holding agent and the W four. When we go to work, the first thing the company want wants is a W four. The company has become convinced over the years that they are a withholding agent. Is this true? Is the company's a withholding agent? Internal Revenue Code, the term withholding agent means any person required to deduct and withhold any tax under under the provisions of sections 1441, 1442, 1443, and 1461. Title 26, United States Code, subtitle F, Chapter 79, Definitions, Section 7701. Withholding agent applies to four and only four sections of the IRC 1441, 1442, 1443, and 1461. Title 26, the Internal Revenue Code, Section A, Income Tax. Chapter 3, Withholding of Tax on Non Resident aliens and foreign corporations. Subchapter A: Non-resident aliens and foreign corporations. One four four one: Withholding of tax on non-resident aliens. One four four two: Withholding of tax on foreign corporations. One four four two: Foreign tax exempt organizations. Subchapter B, application of withholding provisions. 1461, liability for withheld tax. Liability clause for withholding agent to account for the withheld money. There is no withholding agent for domestic citizens living and working domestically with no foreign source of income or income from within a possession of the U.S. nor engage in an excise tax taxable activity. I hope a lot of you getting this and understanding what I'm saying here. Because it may help you out when you body when we first get employed, I mean not get employed, I mean when we first 
uh, get nationalized, you know, is one of the, one of the first things you want to know uh, when you go back to your jobs, you know, whether you are tax exempt or not. But it is, like I said before, it is voluntarily and it's involuntarily. You want to volunteer to do it? Well, that's your business. But what they're telling you here, that's not a necessary requirement. Even if a domestic citizen did have a foreign source of income or income from within a possession of U.S. Uh, other U.S., such as Guam, Puerto Rico, etc., or engaged in excise taxable activity, there would still be no withholding agent defined. Check the IRC or any other law book, and you will not find a definition for a withholding agent for domestic citizens. It would be unconstitutional for the public service, elected and hired government employees to enact a law that would require, force, or compel, command an American citizen to turn over, extract, conversion, their private property, labor, wages, without a court order. From the Internal Revenue Code, it would appear that W-4 is for non-resident aliens, foreign corporations, trusts, partnerships, etc., and foreign tax-exempt organizations. If you argue this in court, it will be a first impression issue as the only argument has been about the exempt W-4's Resumar. It says here, Resumar versus Kaplan, etc. The American citizens have only argued 3402. Therefore, you give a copy of your certificate of exemption from withholding in lieu of Form W-4, and you can give an affidavit of tax-exempt foreign status. Understandably, these documents may come as a great surprise to him, so you will have to be humble in your presentment of such. You can explain to your employer that you are aware that they have agreed to present you with the W-4 upon your employment with them, and if you are aware that they, that they, the employment, the employer will get get filed by the IRS for not get fired by the IRS for not presenting it. This is when you will tell the employer that you will sign a letter stating that they in fact did present you with it, so they will not be fined. In short, they made an offer that you can that you can refuse. Very simple. These are the things that uh, I want to explain to y'all. You know, with, about taxes. You know, but I'm trying. What I'm what I'm telling you, a lot of these. Uh, you see a lot of these uh, moors on the uh, from these more science temples on YouTube, and telling you that you are compelled uh, to uh, uh, pay taxes, but you're not. No. I just explained to you by reading in this in this book right here, but little I just read to you now that you're not compelled to do it. It is voluntary or involuntary. It is not in just involuntary, and that's it. But that's what most people want you to believe. How are you going to pay taxes when there is no money and you're not making any money? You never made any money. You never made any money in the day of your life. So how well, how are you paying these taxes? Those of you that are members of the Morris Science tell you that you must pay your taxes, then you you should ask them, well, how how am I going to pay them since there is no money? If they still play around with you, all you got to do if you have one in your possession to show them a one a so called one dollar bill, which is a Federal Reserve note. And you read in small print in front of them this note is legal tender for all debt, public and private. It's telling you in plain English it's a debt. It's a IOU. And it says that Federal Reserve note. 
legal tender. Legal tender is not lawful money. Legal and lawful are two different terms. Legal deal with the fiction side. And the lawful deal with what is real on the public or the republic. The legal demos or democracy or democratic. What they call so called democracy. Which means majority rule or rule of a crazy demon. I know there are some of you that are listening to the show tonight. I already know this, but I know uh, I'm, I'm telling this for those who don't know, for those who need, who need to know. Now it says here, are you serious? The choice is yours. If you are serious about wanting to, to, wanting to not pay taxes to the private corporations or a corporation called the IRS, which is not the government, nor do they have any authority given from Congress to collect taxes. If they did, if they did, you would want to certainly by seeing their delegation of authority order, stating that their authority given from the Congress. If it had been given from the Congress, then uh, they don't have any authority. They're talking about you need to pay taxes. Okay? Then you can always check with Congress, as many as many have done. They find a lot of these corporations are billing you and threatening to place you in some sort of a violation that seems to always require monetary payment as a remedy, when in fact they have nothing to do with Congress. Therefore, they have no, uh, have not, they have not or no authority to, to compel you to perform it. If you don't take the initiative to be concerned about what is happening to you, then you automatically waive your rights. Clearly, now you see this is due to a lack of action on your part. This allows for the employer to continue the act of withholding monies from your check. It's your choice. Although you're not, as I said before, you're not making any money, so there's no money for them to withhold from your check. It's all a facade. It's all make believe. It's not real. Withholding your money from your check. <laughs> really? Seriously? Maybe your uh, the energy on your labor that you put put into the uh, put into these corporations that you work for. That's all they could be withholding. That's all they were holding certain energies and labor that you put in on these jobs that you work for. That's what they are withholding. I was talking to a brother earlier to, earlier today, uh, brother uh, brother Massa Musa El Bay, and he was telling me that really we are the money. Say for instance that you go buy a house. Uh, as soon as you autograph your name on there or sign your autograph on the paper, you already the house is already yours. Most people don't know that. Let me move along here. Okay. So it says the Congress represents the people. Their actions ought to be dedicated dedicated by the will of the people. This is why you hear people telling you to write your Congress. The problem is there needs to be more than one person writing. And that's right. It is. You need to do it collectively. You need to do it by a group. You need to do it by numbers. The problem is the lack of numbers. That's the problem. We had about 70% of us Asiatic people in this country and if they get nationalized, the game would be over. That's not nationalized. They, they, would have, they, wouldn't, they won't have any other choice but to follow, follow us. They wouldn't have any other choice. I'm going to read it again. 
The problem is there needs to be more than one person writing. Exactly. Collectiveness or unity is necessary to affect change. Thus, the people, you, have been silent and have allowed themselves to be enslaved through policy that they think is law. And they do. Well, most of us used to think that, too. You used to think that you have a driver's license to travel on your on your own land. All I thought about was privilege to drive. I used to think I used to have to pay taxes because I used to think that is the law. That is the way things are supposed to go. There are many who know that the Americans pub that the American public is dumbed down. They conspire with each other to rape you every day. Large corporations conspire with the smaller ones, and everybody makes finance off the people. The irony is that even they, those who work for these corporations, think they are administering proper law. The FDA, the Food and Drug Administration, is one of the largest. They display a more than obvious control factor, factor of the people. They do not have the power to make those ridiculous ordinances and statutes that you allow them to call law. They only do it because the people are not active. Now, they are set in the control of PF Natural Foods, oranges, so that you will not be able to consume natural vitamin C, bananas, so you will not have natural potassium, which keeps your food counts level and cleans your drainage system, your kidneys, vegetables, and grow from the ground and keep you uh, keep, keep you free of pockets of pus, mucus that allow cancer cells to thrive, provided you don't drink cow's milk, cheese, and white bread to put the pus back in. Natural food, vegetables, and fruits will help with colon cancer, amongst other cancerous cells. You need to check and see what is more in harmony with you, vegetables or fruits. They want to control all the natural products that are good for your health and grow on this earth, purposely for your consumption. They do this because they are the mindset of punishing you, or they are in the mindset of punishing you. They are building more jails to prove it. They possess a punishing mentality that has no respect for nature and natural order. And they don't. How many of you watch it? Uh, how many of you watch uh, television? No. I mean, even on television, it used to be in the movies now, but you know, even on television, you see more and more and more of homosexual couples, gay couples. That is to push and to further their homosexual agenda. That's why today you see so many children that are homosexuals. One of the reasons. One of the reasons. The other reasons that a lot of stuff they put in your foods. That's turning them out that way, believe it or not. Yeah, this is the madness. This is the madness that's been going on. I'm telling you. It says here, notice to all workers, employees, and employers regarding the voluntary nature of the IRS Form W-4. The Internal Revenue Code, Title 26, Chapter 1, Part 31, Section 3402. Section 1, provided that the IRS Form W-4 is a voluntary. Let me say it again. Section 1 provides that the IRS Form W-4 is a voluntarily withholding agreement between an employer and an employee. There is no law requiring a worker or employee to complete the IRS Form W-4.
You hear that? Okay, it says here, this notice must be posted on a conspicuous place where it can be read by all employees and workers. It says here, so let's terminate the W-4 agreement. For all of those who have already entered into a W-4 agreement, it is necessary for you to utilize the W-4T form to terminate such contract. You don't have to explain to your employer why or to anyone. If the the IRS comes forth to you, then you will deal with them directly and utilize your indigenous status and the fact that there shall be no taxation without representation. However, this is not an argument for your employer. After backing out with the W-4T, you will then always use in lieu of the W-4 when the time comes every year for you to fill out the usual W-4 form. Then again, I must say you must be in your proper person. You must be in appropriate persona, meaning in one's own proper person and sejuris, which means in one's own right. In appropriate persona, sejuris. You must be, and you must be nationalized. You must be a nationalized American national. Where you can argue, where you can argue indigenous rights. You cannot argue indigenous rights if you do not have claim or proclaim, uh, put it on the record, on the public record, that you are such an aboriginal indigenous autochthonous being in North America. Okay. The state of the corporate world is that they are they are falling. I'm reading this again. The state of the corporate world is that they are falling. You will find more and more that company t- Companies cannot maintain the restrictions that are placed upon them from the states. They are no longer interested in hiring people and giving them benefits, etc. They don't want to be bothered with all the red tape bestowed upon them either. So they look for people who can contact their services to them. This way they they are not liable for medical benefits, employee taxes, etc., Everyone wants to become free from the Roman yoke. Now you must determine what you can do and how you can present your service for hire. It will become harder and harder to find the 9 to 5. Keep me alive, J-O-B. All of you in the workforce know this today. This is why some jobs... Most of these jobs now, they have their own janitorial services, freelance. They don't want to pay them, give them any benefits. Medical insurance, hospitalization, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Dental insurance, they don't want to be bothered with all that. For those of you that work on these security companies, security companies, you don't know how much money, uh, so-called money, they have on you. Most security companies are without unions. Therefore, they pay them what they want to pay you. because you are insignificant to them. Okay. The following is an example of the law. In W-4 that you that you submit every year and the W-4-T form for the purpose of terminating any current W-4 contract that allows them to make deductions, 
The request for the IRS to return monies from prior deduction will become an issue between you and the IRS, the private corporation, because the employer has probably already given them most of these monies. The employer taxes taxes taken from your check to the IRS on a quarterly basis. They are the employer three months. They give the employer three months to submit those deductions to to them, the IRS. Your energy, that is, and your labor. So notice to all workers and employees regarding the possession of and use of social security numbers. There is no law requiring a person to have or obtain or use a social security number. To, to live or work in the United States, social security is a voluntary system, and there is no legal requirement that an individual obtain or use a social security number. The Social Security Act requires the Social Security Administration to establish and maintain records of wages and self-employment income for each individual whose work is covered under the program. A Social Security number is needed for that purpose. No Social Security benefits will be paid to you unless you obtain and use a Social Security number. That is so true. The Internal Revenue Service, IRS, imposed no penalty on an employer if he if the failure to show a Social Security number or taxpayer identification number, which TIN number, which is the Tin Man and the Wizard of Oz. The Tin Man. Tin Man and the Wizard of Oz represents all uh, uh, those of you that remember, remember the movie The Wizard of Oz and those of you uh, that uh, still watch it. Always remember that when you see the Tin Man. Okay. The, uh, the IRS requires an employer an employer requests IRC the employer to provide the employer with either an SSN or TIN a social security number or a tax identification number which is the 10 man number however the employee may refuse to provide an SSN or 10 uh, TIN number an employer is prohibited by title 7 of the Civil Rights Act from dismissing any employer for refusing to provide an SSN or TIN number because of their religious belief or creed. I'll read this again. An employer is prohibited by Title 17 of the Civil Rights Act from which dismissing any employer for refusing to provide an SSN or TIN number because of their religious belief or creed. Section 7 of Public Law 93-579 provides that it shall be, uh, shall be unlawful for any federal, state, or local government agency to deny to any individual any right, benefit, or privilege provided by the law, provided by law because of such individual refusal to disclose his Social Security account number. Because that's all a social security number is, an account number, a trust account that they set up for you from the day you was born. They set that up for all of us. Okay. If you do not wish your employee to use your social security number, you should tell them in writing that you elect to withdraw the use of your social security number and request your employer to enter the phase Employer, employee, employ, employee refused to provide in the place provided for a social security number if and when you, when your employer reports your wages and taxes. You can put that in writing. Okay, I'm going to read this again. If you do not wish your employer to use your social security number, you should tell them in writing, to put it in writing, that you elect to withdraw the use of your Social Security number and request your employer to enter the phrase employee refuse to provide. That's what you want to tell your employer. No, tell your employer that you state that. 
employee refused to provide in the space provided for a Social Security number if and when your employer reports your wages and taxes. Eighteen United States Code 18, Section 242, and 42, United States Code 42, Section 1983, provides that whoever, under color of any law, statute, ordinance, regulation, or see this here, or custom willfully subjects any person in any state, territory, or district to the deprivation of any rights, privileges, or immunities secured or protected by the Constitution or laws of the United States shall be fined under this title or in prison not more than one year or both. United States Code 42, Section 1983 further provides that a, violatory, a, viol a violator shall be liable, party, injured in any action at law, suit in equity, or other proper proceeding for redress. It says here in the 42 United States Code, Section 408 provides that whoever declares, Section 8, whoever declares, uses or compels the disclosure of the Social Security number of any person in violation of the laws of the United States shall be guilty of a felony upon conviction thereof, shall be fined under Title 18 or in prison for not more than five years or both. Okay, let me read this again. Let me read this carefully. Let me listen to this carefully. Whoever, okay, it says uh, uh, 42 United States Code, Section 408 provides that whoever discloses, uses, or compels the Social Security number of any person in violation of the laws of the United States shall be guilty of a felony and upon conviction thereof shall be fined under Title 18 or in prison for, for not more than five years or both. It says here, this notice must be posted in a, corporate, in a conspicuous place where it can be read by all employees and workers. That means anybody that calls or asks your job or asks for your uh, Social Security number and they give it to them, that means that is a felony. And they'd be in big trouble. That's what that means. And I'm supposed to give out your Social Security number in to, to anyone. So the importance of signing everything, all rights reserved. Once you enter into a contract, you may terminate it provided, and especially if you have signed it with all rights reserved. It says here UCC 1-207. They don't use that no more. UCC 1-207 is now UCC 1-308. That's what it is now. That's what it is currently now. So most people uh, will put UCC 1-207 slash 1-308. But I must advise you, when you uh, do these, do this thing, all rights reserved, and when you sign all rights reserved and UCC this, UCC that, I would advise you heavily to know what these things mean. Know what they mean. Because you may go into a courtroom and the judge may ask you, well, what are what what do you mean by all rights reserved? Meaning you are reserved. You mean you are you are reserving your rights that's already been reserved by the Constitution of the United States of America. And always remember, the government does not give you rights. It does not give you rights. You already have the existing rights that's already been reserved by the Constitution of the United States of America, the God-given rights. Always remember that. It says here, it 
the extent of the use of the UCC is this. UCC, well, 1 dash, which is 1 dash 308 now, and UCC 1 dash 103 states two things. Number one, that you will not enter into any contract that are not in full disclosure. And number two, you will not enter into any contract that are not in harmony with natural law. That's what this means. I'm going to read this again. That's what this means, okay? When you when you put down uh, UCC 1-308 and UCC 1-103, that's what this means. These are two things. One, that you, you will not enter into any contract that are not in full disclosure. And two, you will not enter in any kind of uh, any contract that are not in harmony with natural law. This means that if you know by having full disclosure of all portions of said contract what you were binding yourself to, you would refuse to contract. Everyone has the right to contract or not. Contracts or... Hold up. Contracts are entered into that are not in harmony with natural or common law or usually all contracts that violate your unalienable and unalienable and inalienable and unalienable rights. And by signing them, you waive your rights. This is what it's mean by unalienable. Some people say unalienable and inalienable or unalienable. But we used to say it in Washita, we said unalienable. An unalienable because that means you cannot be leaned upon. You cannot be leaned upon. This is why when Dr. Aileen El Bay had broke it down for us one time, we said did that. But that's the way we say it. And that's why we say it that way. See, this is the method in which you hold these corporations to the constitutional law, in which they are bound by the, by their state's constitution, which cannot supersede the supreme law of the land, the United States Republic Constitution. And they don't. State constitution does not supersede the United, uh, the United States uh, Constitution of America. It does not. Always remember that. This is the Article 6 of the Constitution. And it has much to do with the peace of treaty of the, of the Treaty of Peace and Friendship also between the Moors and the United States Corporation. Article 6. All debts contracted and engagements entered into before the adoption of this Constitution shall be as valid against the United States under the Constitution as under the Constitution. This Constitution and the laws of the United States, which shall be made in pursuance thereof, and all treaties made or which shall be made under the authority of the United States, shall be the supreme law of the land, and the judges in every state shall be bound thereby in anything in the Constitution or laws of any state to be contrary notwithstanding. I hope all you understand what I'm saying. The senators and representatives before mentioned and the members of the several state legislatures and all executive and judicial offices both in the United States and of the several states shall be bound by oath or affirmation to support this Constitution, but no religious test shall ever be required as a qualification to any office or public trust under the United States. Okay? I'll read this again. This little part here. It says here, <clears throat> But no religious test shall ever be required as a qualification to any office or public trust under the United States. So why were they questioning uh, Barack Obama, Barack Hussein Obama, whether he was a Muslim or not? 
when he first took office in 209. Evidently, very few of those people ever studied the Constitution, do they? Or don't know the Constitution, or, or, or they know the Constitution, but they're just banking on the rest of the public not knowing the Constitution. There's no requirement, there's no religious requirement for anyone that want to hold any public office. There isn't any. The Constitution is the highest contract. It is the supreme law of the land. The magistrates, meaning judges, that's what they are. <clears throat> That's what we call uh, that's what we call magistrates. They are not judges; they are magistrates. The magistrates, court clerks, and all officers of the court take an oath to uphold the Constitution. However, they are the very ones that break the oath that they took. This is because they operate in an administrative level and will do so if you don't uphold your rights by holding them to their oath. You are not asking them for anything. Instead. You are, are enforcing the law. If they fail to do so, they are the lawbreakers who are breaking their own oath of office. If you wish not to take the oath, or if, if, <clears throat> if they wish not to take the oath, then they are certainly not in any authority over you or anyone, as they would be making a statement that they resign from their public from their public office duties. They have gotten away. With this, because one, most people are ignorant of the of the law themselves, and two, and the other half are are not identified as natural persons, of which the Constitution is set to defend. I'm gonna stop right here. I'm gonna stop right here. I'm gonna stop right here. Okay, said uh, they have gotten away with this because. Most people are ignorant of the law themselves, and number two, and the other half are not identified as natural persons, of which the Constitution is set to defend. What does it mean by that? That means you're not in your proper person. Most of us are not. Most of us have not been in our proper persons. Most of us, most of us are not by every every sense uh, the day we were born when they made out those birth certificates for us haven't been. Most of us are not. Maybe mm, maybe about thirty thirty percent of us are. That are that are that means thirty percent of the Asiatic people that are, that have been nationalized. But I I I I I figured that about seventy percent of percent of percent of percent of us have, have not. Because when you get nationalized, you and on paper, uh, it has that you are a natural person. Cannot defend unnatural persons. Cannot defend you. Every time they, uh, when they list the name persons, persons, you must very understand what they are talking about. Really understand, are you talking about the natural person or the unnatural person? The unnatural person is a corporation. The natural person is in full life. In full life meaning in full physical and civil existence. The unnatural person, which falls on the color of law. Color. When you say that you are black, Negro, a people of color, that falls on the unnatural people, or uh, falls on the artificial person category. Therefore, According to law, you do not exist. 
So why do you need with rights of any kind, let alone civil rights, which is a privilege also, If you had an artificial plant, would you give it water? No, you wouldn't. It doesn't need water. This artificial is not real. What would you? What would? What does an artificial person need with rights? Would be? Uh, what, what? What does an artificial person need with human rights? That's why most of you always wind up with civil rights, but not human rights. A right is God-given to you. It cannot be taken away. A privilege can. A privilege can be given to you or it can be taken away from you at any given time. So what you want is human rights. To start off with that, you need to be nationalized. I'm talking to you, my Asiatic sisters and brothers. You need to be nationalized. You need to have affidavits, declarations. And when you get these papers, whoever will nationalize you, you to get them to notarize on certain papers. Not all of them, but certain papers need to get them notarized by a notary. When you get that done, you need to take them to the county recorder of records and deeds and vital statistics that you are not a 14th Amendment citizen. 13, 14, or 15th Amendment citizens. That you're neither one of these, or neither one of these have never been properly ratified. This is what you need to do. And on these nationality papers that have that you are a natural person, that you are in full life, you are full in civil and physical, physical and civil existence, and that you are not, that you are not, that you are not the artificial person, that you are a natural person. It will, all, it will have all that in your nationality papers. But you have to proclaim that. You hear people talking about they don't need no papers. They don't need no, they're, they're, no, they're stupid. But they did papers on your ass when you were born. If the Europeans don't care nothing about papers, well, why the hell did they do papers on your ass when you was born? Come on, man. Talk that craziness to me. All right, I'm going to go on a break here for about maybe three or four minutes, and I'll get back with you after uh, this brief break. All right, brother, sisters. Peace, peace. I'm back. I'm back. All right, all right. Um, I'm going to remind you, remind you all that just now coming on to the show, that we have an event in North Carolina with Dr. Aleem and Kadira El Bay on the 17th, 18th, and 19th of March. I'm inviting everybody to come down and be with us. You know, I'm planning on being there. You know, I'm enjoying myself uh, uh, very much last time I was there. And they have great food, they have different classes, dealing with mortgages and dealing with law and holistic uh, uh, health living. Uh, I believe that you will enjoy it. You know, just come on down. And uh, if you want to find out more information about it, uh, contact, get on the website and contact them uh, at com. I say com, or you can call this number, 910-364-9099. I repeat, 910-364-9099. Don't miss this great event. 
I wouldn't miss it for the world. And don't you either. Okay? All right. It says here, also before I start, before I start, I'm going to uh, I'm gonna, uh, give a message to those sisters and brothers that in the Morris uh, Science Temple of America Incorporated that uh, I don't attempt to uh, to insult anyone or to uh, offend anyone. All I intend to do is to teach and to uh, give out to my sisters and brothers to what a, a little bit I, I have learned myself. Because what I want for myself, I want for my sisters and brothers. You know, and most of all, I know that most of your temples are under the 501c3, and you, you are not allowed to say certain things dealing with nationality and birthright issues, dealing with taxes, dealing with driver's license fraud, dealing with the tax fraud, and any of that. Okay? But I'm going to continue on. It says here, federal government takes over states. Since the Republic states has been taken over by the federal government, no court can hear and issue any relating anything relating to the uh, matter relating to the state matters. In truth, the incident did not take place on federally owned land or any land that a corporation has jurisdiction over and prosecutions are reserved to the state. Not corporations or federally government or federal government, per Article 10 of the Bill of Rights, which 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 the state uh, have, uh, (coughs) which is Article 10, gives state rights. That means no other power can interfere in the matters of that state. Like I said before, how many of us really know that dealing with the number 10, how many of us know that, that there are only 10 amendments, actually lawful, lawful, lawful amendments of the Constitution that are lawful? <coughs> Not too many. Starting with the 11th Amendment, amendment on up. They are legal, but they are not lawful. I know I have said, said that in previous blog talk shows. I just want to repeat that. This is what's going on, you know. Nationality and birth rights concern, yet yeah, this is what you need to do. Uh, like I said, that the problem is uh, it's numbers. You know, the reason why a lot of people say that certain laws and certain laws dealing with nationality matters don't work. It's not that they don't work. They do work. There's The problem is it's numbers. We don't have enough people. And the power is the people. The government shall always be afraid of its people. The people should never be afraid of its government. Never. What the so-called government or corporation fear is 90% of the people waking up because we are the power. We hold the power, not the so-called government. Because we gave our consent for the so-called government or corporation to rule over us. They are supposed to serve us, not the other way around. I saw one brother on YouTube talking about his tribal nation were the original people in the Americas and said that Moors wasn't the original people. His nation tribe was. This was a Moor talking, or whether he considered himself a Moor or call himself a Moor or not. 
I wonder do he know what the word more means. As I stated in previous blog talk shows. Oh, he was talking about law and everything else. Indigenous rights of indigenous people. Uh, I mean, you name it. The brother was on time with it until he said that Moors weren't the original people or the first people in the Americas. Which shows me he is delusional on that part. I wonder, do he know what more means? Do he know that more means land-connected people? That's what a more is. A more is a woman or man that's connected to the land of the earth. That is a more, not a color, not black. They're not black people. That is another artificial construct. Furthermore, it's an adjective, and people are not adjectives. People are nouns and proper nouns. That's not even debatable. That's a fact. Can't even argue with, argue with me on that on that issue. That's not arguable. We have some people uh, get this program on YouTube called Africans, African Americans, ain't Africans. That's true. I go along with that to a to, to the point where they start mocking the African Moors or the African people of Africa. They start uh, talking about the way that the way uh, the certain tribes of Africa, the way uh, the way their heads are shaped, the way their lips are elongated. I start mocking them, laughing at them. And then asking questions uh, to the audience, you don't want to be be them, one of them, are you? No, you don't want to be mocked up like that. No. Contrary, brother, uh, contrary belief, brother, we are we are one and the same still. With all this land, was once called Pangaea. It works like you can see it, it like a puzzle. You can see it like Africa. The continent of Africa and the continent of, of America and joining together at one time. But this was all Africa at one time. Before that, it was called Asia. That's why we are called Asiatics also. Until the Great Drift. Part of Africa is nothing no more than Northwest Africa. This is the Northwest Africa that has broken off from the African continent. This is the Moroccan Empire. The Morocco in the Northwest Africa over over across the Atlantic is the Moroccan Kingdom. Those of you that saw the certain uh documentaries on uh Hillary Clinton, Barack Obama, when they gave their speech on Morocco, how Moroccans have served their country, have served this country over the years since uh, the United States Corporation establishment. Morocco being the only nation recognizing us as a, as, as a government or a nation. Well, the Moroccan over there in Africa. Today's Morocco over in Africa wasn't established as a nation until 1956. We're talking about 1777. So what Morocco were they talking about? They were talking about the Moroccan Empire here. They can't do nothing but that. It can't mean nothing but make sense. Those of you that have common sense, the Moroccans have served this country. Hillary Clinton was saying the Moroccans have served this country through the years 
of his first uh, so-called foundation or founding. And it's all of his wars. And this is the police departments, armed forces, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So who was Hillary Clinton talking about? Talking about us. We are those Moroccans she was talking about. She's not going to tell you that. Of course not. That's for us to learn. The Moroccan flag that they have. European gave the Moroccan kingdom our flag. Don't you find it? Do you find it strange that the uh, the consular courts that we had here in the Americas or North America, they, these United States, was shut down in 1956, the same year that the Moroccan kingdom in Africa was born. I became a nation. When they shut down the consular courts here in this country, which were our courts, all we had our own courts. We had our own courts. Most people don't know that. It's called the consular courts. But that was a large stronghold of the Ottoman Empire here in, in the America. Crackers gave the Moroccan oh, a kingdom over there our flag. That's our flag, the Moroccan hold. That's our Moroccan flag. Those Moroccans over there sold us out, like the Iroquois Confederation, or so-called Indians sold us out. These are, these are the history that y'all need to know. This is the history you need to know. Yeah, so <clears throat> I'm going to go on here and read the rest of this. Statutes have no jurisdiction over the people. I'm going to say this again. Statutes have no jurisdiction over the people. Jurisdiction over, over the people will never be found in any statute as has been applied by some magistrates, uh, what we call judges, or so-called judges, who clearly are incompetent, as the United States Supreme Court have already affirmed and they do not know what jurisdiction really is. So when they make unlawful statements, you need to keep keep them keep in mind that the writ of mandamus mandamus it must be submitted to the United States Supreme Court, advising them that there is a magistrate judge who is clearly incompetent. They do, they do not know the difference between an affidavit of fact and a motion. They confuse the two, two by making a decision to deny an affidavit of fact when they cannot lawfully do so. They can deny a motion. Affidavit must be answered or rebutted when presented with an environment of jurisdiction asking for which delegation of authority which defines what they have jurisdiction over. That's an environment of jurisdiction. A magistrate may be, or a so-called judge, a magistrate may say he has jurisdiction or has jurisdiction per a statute, yet he has already been presented with with state or with their deceases, affirming that once jurisdiction has been challenged, it must be proven to exist by written documentation. His very action declares that his authority is greater not only than the Supreme Court, but the United States Republic Constitution, because the Supreme Court only deals with matters 
that involve the Constitution because the Constitution is the supreme law of the land, of which all authority of courts and officers of courts are derived. This is why they've taken an oath to uphold it, which they never do. All of them do. Judges, district attorneys, lawyers, uh, police, so-called police officers, which are nothing but uh, security agents for the corporations. But, but you know, when I'm talking about police officers, what sheriffs, whatever. United States Marshals, uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It says here, it is your civic responsibility to responsibility to notify the Supreme Court that there is a magistrate who has stepped who has stepped outside his delegated authority order and presumes to administer judicial authority. Ministerial officers are incompetent to receive grants of judicial power from the legislature. Their acts in attempting to exercise such powers as necessarily nullities. It says here, Burns versus Supreme Court case. The above outlines fraud by an Article 3 judge that this sits in a municipal court. By sitting in a municipal court, it immediately makes them a magistrate or a magistrate or an administrative officer when they do not have any judicial power. I'll read this again. The above outlines fraud by an article by an Article Three judge, Article Three judge that sits in a municipal court. By sitting in a municipal court, it immediately makes them a magistrate or an administrative officer, wherein they do not have any judicial power. This very action becomes <clears throat> immediate fraud because, as an artificial uh, three judge, they are of judicial, they are of the judicial branch, and once they switch to a magistrate, which is of the executive branch, they do not have the judicial uh, have the judicial authority. The executive branch cannot sit in a judicial capacity. This is why you ask for their oath of office or their delegation of authority order, you know, to determine what type of officer they are, officers they are. As for an Article Three judge, he knows he would be violating his oath to attempt to sit in judicial, in a judicial capacity in a traffic court because there are no such thing as a traffic court. Traffic courts fall under color of law, which means law, a color of law, a color of law, which means giving the semblance of law, or giving a semblance that's something other than what is real. That means it is a fraud. There's no such thing as a traffic court. Only civil courts and criminal courts. Courts fall under under color of law as they created them as quasi-criminal, and there is no such provisions for either. There's no such thing as a quasi-criminal court, only a criminal court and a civil court. All judges are bound by oath to support the Constitution regardless to their obligations to inferior courts. If they have it, taken an oath, then they absolutely have no authority as all judicial authority is derived from the Constitution. The conflict, fraud, becomes even greater in that public prosecutor rests in the executive branch and if the prosecutor is also an attorney, he is then an officer of the court, which is a part of the judicial branch. That is absolutely a conflict of interest. Read it again. The conflict fraud becomes even greater in that the public prosecutor rests in the executive branch. And if the prosecutor is also an attorney, he is he is then an officer of the court, which is a point of the judicial branch. This is absolutely a conflict of interest. The mission the mer- mercenary or what you what they call a police officer in order to operate lawfully, 
must be a sheriff or a deputy sheriff. Because the reason why he's saying that because the sheriff and deputy sheriff are the only true law enforcement officers or true police officers. Or the sheriff, which is a Moorish term. That is a real police officer. They are the only ones that has true authority or to enforce, or to, or to enforce law. State and city, or town, county, or, or whatever in this country, and they say they are police officers. They are not police officers. They are security agents for the corporations. Some people call them policy holders, you know, or whatever. They are highway men or women, whatever the case may be. But they are security agents for the corporations. You don't believe me? Ask one of them for a delegation of authority order. Or they might tell you, I'm not giving you nothing. I'm not giving you shit. That's because they don't have one. Ask an attorney, a lawyer. Ask a judge, even. For their delegation of authority order. That means they must have an authority from Congress or from the people. You have to be elected to an office to be an officer. Okay, let me move along here. Okay. Like again, how many people know what a Miranda is? I'm reading their Miranda rights. Determining when a Miranda is required. The following is a state or a stare decisis. This will assist you in an identity when you are under lawful arrest. When a Miranda is required, state is taken during legal custody or inadmissible if they were the product of coercion. If Miranda warnings were not given or if they was a violation of the rule of Edward versus Arizona concerning the right to have counsel present during custodial interrogation. Two requirements must be met before Miranda is up applicable. The subject must be in custody and the questioning must meet the legal definition of interrogation. Therefore, it was held by the U.S. versus Miles case. 83, uh, second, uh, section 201, 1201, okay? A person is in custody for the purpose of Miranda. If he has been deprived of his freedom of action in any significant way, or his freedom of action has been curtailed to a degree associated with a formal arrest, an individual is in, is in custody at the point a reasonable person would feel that he was the, not free to terminate the interrogation. It says here in the Byrne v. Camber case, case 204. Okay, Miranda may not, in effect, be overruled by an act of Congress. It says here in Dickerson v. U.S., case 120. The privileges against self-incrimination attaches, attaches, attaches either when a person is legally compelled to testify or during custodial inter interrogation. When the compulsion comes from the custodial environment, it's a U.S. versus Hernerland case, 197. These are different uh, things, what they, uh, uh, what they I mean, different things, what they call law, which is not law. Say, say, what is the status of a judge? Say, sure, versus Rose case, 416. Note, by law, a judge is a state officer. The judge then acts not as a judge, but as a private.
fourth or a fifth. State has no power to impart to him any immunity from responsibility to the supreme authority of the United States. No, let's 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 go back to let's go back not to the Constitution. But let's go back to uh, nationality again. You can get out of being nationalized. The benefits you can get out of being nationalized is your damn freedom. That's one of the benefits, but uh, but a long process uh, begins also when you're dealing with uh, uh, UCC's filings and non-UCC filings and the authentication of the birth certificates and so on, doing executrix or executive letters. But, but that's on another subject. Okay? See, it says here, what is any name? There is... There is more in the name than meets the eye. Because they said, what's in the name? Because a lot of people uh, ask the question, well, you know, why why my name has to be corrected? You know, why do my name, my, especially my last name or my surname, why do it have to be corrected? Because you are carrying the names of, of the families. You're doing transacting business in another family's name, which in law is known as a fraud. But it's not the benefit of it's not in any benefit of, of the families to charge you with fraud. Why they want to charge you with fraud? Why they why they while they can make money off of you? Why why when 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 you transact the business, selling and buying in their names, everything belongs to them and not you. It's for their benefit, not yours. That's the importance of a free national name, a free appellation. That's a free national name. That's the importance of having one. And not get another name as Smith, Jones, and Johnson's neither. You want to have a name such as um, Mustafa, Asar, El Bay. Or El, or Bay, Al, or Day, or Ali. That's what you want to have a name like that, or you can have one like uh, Tecumseh. Takanda, El Bay, or El, or Bay, or whatever. That's what you. That's the kind of name you want to have. I mean, I'm just throwing this out there as examples these names, but I'm just throwing these out here as examples. Okay. So there is more in a name than 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 meets the eye. There there is more in a name than that which vib- vibrates as sound in the ear. Name grammatically classified is a substantive verb derived from the old Sanskrit word nomen and the old Moorish Latin word, nomen. The word substantive grammatically classified is an adjective derived from the old Moorish Latin words substantivus, or substantive, or substantium, and means of person, of nations, etc., that stands of or by itself, is self-sufficient, and is free from the influence of guardians or the control of others, with the condition of being politically free and having an independent self, existing or status, being and belonging to the substance of a thing, and it's essential having an actual or real existence, not imaginary or illusory. This substantive nomen concepts are essential to civilization and are universal in principle. Therefore, the trust of, of the honor of, 
the integrity of and the inherited birthrights of a nation of people is embodied in the recognized and essential to names of that particular natural person or people relative to the science which treats of positive law being jurisprudence the word substantium means relating to and consisting of the rules and the principles of right law administered by a court as opposed to the forms of procedure thus substantive law substantive substantive is the opposite of color of law and the opposite of prima facie imaginary or illusion that's what prima facie means illusion or imaginary substantivium is real Before we close out, I want you to remind you again that we have an big, big event in North Carolina, and uh, and uh, from the 17th, 18th, and 19th of March. Be sure to uh, if you have any questions again, be sure to con- contact Dr. Alim L. Bay at www.dralimlbay.com www.dralimlbay.com and come on down to this great event. I said, I said before, those who you are interested in holistic health, you know, issues. I'm sure they can straighten that out for you down there. Different different diseases, herbalists uh, to advise you to take different herbs. Uh, a lot of remedies for holistic health. You know, uh, you can food. Uh, healthy food for you, uh, man. All types of classes dealing with laws, uh, dealing with tax, dealing with tax fraud, dealing with uh, how to uh, uh, to deal, uh, to be on a different status when you file taxes. Cause a lot of a lot of us want to be on a different status when we file taxes, not the same status you are uh, when you dealing with ten uh, forties. And stuff like that. Those, those are styles for the for dummies. I put it that way. You know, you don't want to continue to be a dummy. You know, you want to continue to be you no know, more intelligent than what you are as you progress in your studies and becoming national or national uh, your and into your na- nationality studies and being nationalized. And don't want to know what it really means to be an Aboriginal, Indigenous, Autochthonous woman or man or an American, which you really are. Not black, Negro, colored, American. Glad to have you. Great event. Like I say, if you have any, uh, you know, have any, uh, I'll repeat it again. Uh, as doctor, I get on the web, internet, and you can dial W. I mean, put dot put w dot 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 or you can call this number, 910-364-9099. Dial, uh, repeat again, 910-364-9099. We're getting close to, uh, to shut it down, so I'm going to keep on reading until they tell me I need to get off. All right. It says, the word name, nomen, an attribute or synonyms. Synonyms are words which have the same sense as an uh, have the same sense as another in the same accepted language and having the same general sense, but each possessing of themselves meaning not shared by their others. A synonym may also be a word which has an equivalent in another language, and so a synonym is either of two or more things, or like, or 
identical nature, but but called by called by different names. Names, attributes, or nomens are vital to civilizations, and the, and the name and that name are uh, names acknowledge the existence of and the re- reality of a person, a natural person, a people, or a thing, organic beings that w- w- which takes up space and can be perceived by the senses. And location pertaining to geography comes upon the stage of human discernment. Does a name, a nom, a nomen, an attribute? So they say I only got 90 seconds now, but uh, I hope I have uh, enlightened you tonight. I always try to do my best, you know. Like I say, uh. Come to the event on the 17th, 18th, or 19th of March. You know, come down and join us. You know, you you, you know, uh, you will not be disappointed because I wasn't, and I hope you, uh, and I hope you down there. Okay. Like I say, the phone number is nine one zero three six four nine zero nine 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 one zero three six four nine zero nine nine. All right. As I say to you all, all good night. And uh, let's say it now, uh, the Washita language, a Hawate Washita East. May my spirit and your spirit spring forth with the jaguar. Bawasama Dakunda. Peace, family. <laughs>